repeat myself. Oh, everybody say we continue. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Elder Fran has jokes tonight. Praise God. That little, that little sign came up. I was like, yeah, we're recording. Praise God. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. God is so good and he is worthy to be praised. I'm so happy to see you all, especially our pastor, Pastor Pelham, who is able to join us. Are you there, Pastor? I don't know if you're behind that block. I know you were there for a minute or two. Well, if he comes back on, I definitely want him to say a word to the church because um, he hasn't been with us on Wednesday nights. Um, so when he comes back, we'll call on him. But praise God, I'm excited to see you all. And, um, you know, we're going to just jump right into it. I'm going to continue on the gifts of the spirit. Um, there's so much to study here. I work today. So I got up early this morning. I, I've had my notes in place, but I really wanted to go in depth on breaking down the gifts. And I will do that next week since I'm on. And there's one week at the end of the month um, and Elder Fran and Deacon Lee, I'm going to reach out to you. Pastor didn't assign anybody. And I said, can we do like a recap on that? And maybe the three of us take pieces or we talk about the specific gifts that relate to us or something like that. But we're, you know, part of Bible study is all about learning, right? It's definitely, it's, there's some preaching maybe, but it's teaching. And so that's why I tell you every week when I come forth, I don't want to always be up here talking. I do believe that, you know, we're all learning together. Um, so it's important when you show up, even on Zoom that you're taking notes. Um, you know, back in the old school, the old day, we always came to church our, our, our weapons were we always had a Bible, we always had a pen, and we always had a notebook. Now, I know people use their phones now, and I know Sister Camille usually takes notes. I see some people doing that. I see Sister Diane writing. I think it's important because we need to remember, and sometimes it just doesn't pop in our head. So to go back and look at a page or look at something we wrote is really important, and the enemy knows that how communication goes forth, he knows things are important in writing. And, you know, if people are visionary on stickies or on some kind of wood art or whatever it is, he knows those things are important. So I do think it's important for the church to do that. That's part of our weaponry. Before um, our weaponry, let me um, open up in a word of prayer and then I'll get started. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, I just thank you for your spirit. God, I thank you that you are here. God, I thank you that you are going to take over this Bible study. God, this is your program. Hide me behind the cross. I thank you, Jesus, that I feel all the nerves that I feel because that reassures me that it's all about you and it's not me any longer. So God, I thank you. I thank you for the gifts. God, I thank you for that the word will fall on good ground because that is what this is about. So God, I thank you for the fellowship. I thank you for our pastor and his wife and what you're doing in their lives. I thank you for what you're doing in the body of Christ. I ask you to have your way in Jesus' mighty name, amen. And so I want to start, you know, I went back to all of my notes when we first started this and we started during the month of April. And when I first came on, um, I, um, the month before that we, or the months before that quarter one, we had been talking about spiritual agreement and spiritual agreement led us here to the gifts of the spirit. And so to recap, and I'm going to ask questions, we can use the chat. Cause again, I don't, <laughs> I said this the last time Andy kind of teased me. I said, I don't want to talk a lot tonight. And then I ended up, ended up teaching a lot on that specific night, but I really do wanna open this up to you more. And there are a few things that I do specifically wanna talk about, teach on, but I wanna bring us back to what we know as our foundation. And so when we first started this, we, talk about, we talked about how every believer has spiritual gifts and that Christ gives every believer these gifts. Some of us get one, some of us get more than one. But the gift of salvation is by its, its grace through faith. And so it is given to anyone who accepts Jesus Christ. 
God is good and he is generous and he gives us a gift. And I remember specifically as I was looking over my notes, because I usually take notes from every class. One of the classes, um, the Bible studies, Deacon Lee talked about a gift or it was either his preaching or this class. I didn't put a date on it, but it was like the gift. When you get a gift from somebody, they're going to give it to you and you have to open it. And that's what the gift of the spirit is like. You know, I remember what came out of us coming forth with this is a couple of people were like, well, I don't understand how to activate the gifts of the spirit. And I don't understand how to speak in tongues. And I don't know what my gifts are. How do I determine that? Well, we've been giving you that. The foundation in every single one of these Bible studies that we have been teaching, the foundation is 1 Corinthians 13, love. People, church, if we can start with love, love is the foundation of everything because the gifts are given up to us through grace and faith. Not any favor, not because you're special, not because you, you know, look like this, you look like that, you did this, you did that. It's because the gifts are given to every believer. And so I read to you Ephesians 4, 7. Again, I want to remind you, if you didn't write it down in the beginning, write this down. Because when you are seeking as a believer and when you are trying to figure it out, you want to be able to go to the word of God and seek his face for what your gift is. Um, if I were to ask you right now to write me, you know, write down five gifts, of, five gifts that you have. Now I'm talking about gifts of the spirit. Um, so five gifts, I wonder what people would write and I would challenge you. And there are some things that we're going to do together tonight if we have time. So if you can grab your phone or a pencil or paper, because I'm going to challenge you on some things. So Ephesians 4, 7 says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So the gift is not about us. The gift is about him. The gift of salvation is by grace through faith. And so are our spiritual gifts. And we talked about that a little bit in several of these classes. God is generous, just like we give our kids good gifts, God gives us good gifts. And as many of you know, I started early out in my life in the church, going to a Pentecostal church, I thank God. I had people that were willing to step up and mentor me and really sort of show me how to do this life in Christ. Not, not, um, and when I say show me, it's not, they didn't do it for me instead, right? I had to do the work, but they directed me to the word of God. And I can't say I've been, you know, none of us, right? I, I haven't been perfect. I've made mistakes along my, the way. But the one thing I try to do is when I make it and I realize it, I want to repent, turn it around and keep it moving forward because the enemy loves nothing better but to keep us stuck in where we are so that we can't move forward, so that we can't attain the power of God, so that we can't tear down his kingdom because he knows that knowledge is power. He knows that if we know the word of God like he knows it, that we could, we could tear this, the, the city down. We could tear the country down. We could tear the world down. He knows that. So he will do everything in his power to divide the body of Christ. And we've talked about that a little bit to make me look funny at you and think this about you and that about you because we all bring different stuff to the table. We all bring different issues to the table. And so if he can get one little person or a little group over here to feel some way about a little group over here, he will do that. And he will continue to do that to the church until the church gets wise and operates from a base of 1 Corinthians 13, because everything flows from that. Every single thing that we do flows from that. And so we talked about the gifts and what they mean and we broke it down <laughs> i'm gonna call on you again because i know you knew it you um i talked about how i taught it in vacation bible school 
how to remember there are categories in the gifts of the spirit, right? And so this is a recap. I'm gonna spend about five more minutes on the recap piece. There are categories in the gifts of the spirit. And I'll help you out, Brother Prince, if you don't remember them. There are categories, right? And so the Holy Spirit, um, there, are, there are categories in the gifts of the spirit. And so Brother Prince, do you remember what they are? So the, the three categories, right? Yes. Um, so you had said the, um, say, no, and do. Yes. Um, those are the three headlines, I guess. Yes. Perfect. And Perfect. then, um, for saying is, uh, prophecy, tongues and interpreting the, the tongues. Yep. Um, for knowing is wisdom, knowledge, discernment. Yep. Um, for the doing is the healing, miracles, and faith. Amen. Yes. The power to say something, the power to know something, the power to do something. Those are the gifts of the spirit in terms of manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So we say we're Christians, right? And this is, thank you, Brother Prince. That was perfect, right? It, what's important, it's not to come here and memorize it. Like I just called on Brother Prince. Right When we're fighting the enemy and when we're thinking about things and when we're desiring, and we're going to talk about a scripture where the scripture says to, to earnestly covet the gifts, to earnestly want the gifts. Well, you have to have some foundation and some base to understand why you're doing what you're doing, why you're coveting this gift, right? Why you want to do that next thing. And what we've learned from the scriptures it's to edify the body. It's to encourage the body. It's to inspire the body of Christ. Your gift is not for you. Your gift is not for you, right? And as we teach many of us who have children, as we teach our children about what their talents are and their abilities, we tell them, right? It's not for you to keep it in a little circle, us four, no more. No, it's to give it to the world, to go out there and shine to inspire, to encourage, to uplift somebody else. And so is in the spiritual realm, the same exact thing, that we are to encourage one another and those gifts are to be manifested. And how do we manifest them? I know somebody was um, in um, the women's ministry fellowship. We were talking about um, specific to um, the speaking of tongues. And, you know, we were kind of just going around and people were saying what they do um, specifically as they do that. Again, and as we teach about the tongues, because every person in this Zoom can speak in tongues because the scriptures tell us that it's given to the body diverse tongues. It is one of the gifts. You got to open your mouth. God is not going to force you to do that. And so in our intellectual and natural head, and I will talk about this probably in another class or maybe tonight a little bit. In our natural head, we say, well, when I open my mouth, what do I say? What do I do? How do I do it? You've got to begin somewhere. Just like when we bring children into the earth and they're saying things, right? We had Araya over here the other day. Um, what's the saying? You have logged in from another device. You're polling. Okay. All right. Um, we had a riot over here the other day and Ayana kept saying to her, say, please, say, please. And she said, peace. Right. And we all got so excited. And she's like looking at us like, what? what? <laughs> like what's wrong with them? Right. Peace. It's adorable. It's cute. Right. The Holy Spirit. I don't know if he thinks it's adorable or cute but I know he desires for us to just open our mouths. He's not, he's not, it's not like the enemy when, you know, you're going someplace, you're doing something you're not supposed to do and you open your mouth and you're inspired by some demonic force. You're going to do something way above embarrassing or whatever. That's not the, how the Holy Spirit is. You open your mouth and the Holy Spirit takes over. So you begin, maybe it's a ma, 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 I don't know. But that's how, again, and this is how we were taught back in the day in the church. You are given a gift, you gotta open it. If, you, if you're given that gift, 
of speaking in tongues, you never open your mouth. God's not a, he's not a man that will force you. He's a gentleman. He's not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do if you don't yield to him. And so that's why when we say the gifts are given to the church, the gifts are given under the insp inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That is exactly what it is. I remember when I was first and I was a teenager um, and there were several of us. And, you know, again, back in the old school, you have the mothers at the front of the church and they come on, they're at the front. Come on, we're going to tarry. Come on, girl, let it out, let it out. <laughs> And you're like, okay, all right, I'm trying, you know, you're trying, all right, get, get back, get back, you know, um, but it's funny when I look back at it, but I will tell you this, if you don't make it public, if you don't make it, if you don't begin to do that, even when you're praying privately, um, you're not, you're never going to put it out there, because again, your intellect gets in the way, you feel like, oh, this is like, this sounds silly, what am I saying, what am I doing? But these groanings, as the word of God tell us, they come from the Holy Spirit. And once you are in the Holy Spirit, this is when you come out of your intellectual self. I didn't mean to go this way so early, but once you are in the Holy Spirit, he does the rest. But if you're not gonna open your mouth, you will uh, never, you will never attain the gift of, the, of tongues. You will never, because he won't force you to do that. He won't force you to do any of the gifts that you don't want to do. He is a gentleman. He has given you natural abilities and talents, but the gifts of the spirit are supernatural. Just like your natural gifts, you would never know if you did not attempt to try and move in a direction to do whatever you do, you would never know. When you did that first song, or when you did that, if you're a singer, when you did that first dance or if you're a computer person, when you took that first computer apart and tried it again and tried to make electricity, if you're a scientist, you had to start somewhere. And you might have, it might have even been in front of the school or a competition, but that those are the natural gifts. But now I'm talking about the supernatural gifts. That is different because it is inspired by the Holy Spirit, which every believer is given. So every single one of us here certainly can speak in a heavenly tongue. The Bible talks about that. I don't have the scriptures in front of me. Again, forgive me. Um, as I said, I was pressed for time today, but I will have the scriptures for you next week where it talks about our heavenly tongue, our angelic tongue. And I actually think it's, thank you, Holy Spirit. I think it's first Corinthians, actually the chapter 14. Let me just check. But we are inspired to, to speak to God. And there's a heavenly groaning and a heavenly tongue that we all are given. And you can start it off in your bedroom, wherever you, if you desire, but God wants you to desire the gifts. And it doesn't just mean the gifts of the tongue. Um, it means the other gifts too. Let me just see quickly, sorry. I think it's 1 Corinthians 14. Let me I haven't read it in a while. Sorry. I'll be ready next week with that part of it. Um, yes. Whew, thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. First Corinthians 14. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. Do you hear me, church? It's a tongue that's a heavenly tongue. So when we were talking about it in women's ministry and someone was asking, I think it might have even been Sister Rochelle, right? How I was describing is you gotta, you gotta pray. You've got to ask, you gotta tell the Holy Spirit, that's what I want, God. That is my tongue. As a born-again believer, this is what the word of God is saying. It's a tongue for us to speak in a heavenly tongue. And when we speak it publicly, obviously, generally there, be, there comes an interpretation after that because as the word just said, no man knows it. No man knows what's being said. It's a tongue that's a heavenly tongue. Let me read that again. Uh, verse two says, for he who speaks in a tongue 
does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. So if there is a tongue that comes forth and it is to the church, then there is someone after that that will prophesy and it will speak edification and exhortation to the church. If it's a tongue that's just coming out because I'm worshiping God and that's a tongue between me and my heavenly father, that's a tongue that's a mystery to men, but it's not a mystery to God. It's a heavenly tongue. The word of God tells us, and again, I, I apologize that I don't have the scriptures lined up uh, because I was going to do this part next week, but God is leading me in this way. Um, it, it speaks of, I'm reading, so look at um, 1 Corinthians 14, 21. It, it says, it is it, in the law, it is written with men of other tongues and other lips. I will speak to this people. And yet for all that they will not hear me, right? So this is the tongue. This is where I believe the apostle Paul was talking to the church at Corinth. Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe, right? So we have a heavenly tongue, which is for the believer. And then there's the speaking in tongues, the gifts of the spirit as they manifest to the body of Christ, which is used as an encouragement to the people. So when somebody asked me a couple of weeks or a month ago or whatever, you know, how do I speak in tongues? How do I get to speak in tongues? Well, you have been given a gift. I heard Pastor Pelham say he gave his wife a gift of beautiful pots and pans and the gift is in the trunk. She will never be able to make that culinary cuisine <laughs> with those beautiful pots and pans, right? Until she opens up those beautiful pots and pans and uses them. So we're given a gift, we have to use the gift. We have to open the gift. Again, and because our sometimes our intellect or maybe even our pride you know, gets in the way, um, people don't move forward. Deacon Lee, you have a question and we'll take questions. Yes, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the pens that were given to uh, uh, Minister Jackie, it was the pens that were given to Brittany. Oh, Brittany, okay. Brittany kept them in the trunk. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. All right, anybody else? Let's see, Elder Friend, what did you say in the chat? We can help if needed on scripture, amen. Yeah, pull them out. Um, I That part I started, but I didn't complete it. So I didn't wanna really go down this pathway, but the Holy Spirit is leading me this way. So um, thank God he brought back a couple of the scriptures. Any other questions? Elder Friend. Elder Maji, um, for people that are new, with tongues and, and uh, questioning how to speak in tongues, one, one way you can get to that point of is, in, is praise. If you engulf yourself in praise, uh, whether it's in your room and just, just forget about who, who's out there, whatever's going on, and you just dedicate your time to just praising God, the spirit of God is going to inhabit the praises of his people. The spirit of God is going to move within you that you will speak those utterances and you will speak that the utterances of uh, praise and worship that you don't understand, especially if you've got somebody on your mind and you don't know how to pray for them, then you'll speak in tongues and your prayer will go up to the Lord but it will be in tongues and you're not going to understand because again, we know people on the surface and we don't know what's the depth of what's going on in their lives, but God does know. So sometimes we're speaking in tongues as we're praying because it's at a deeper level that God wants us to communicate. So I, I would suggest that if you're still questioning and still wanting, and that has not happened within you to spend some time just in praise in prayer. 
get away from everyone just just as a personal thing and just spend the time and the spirit of god will come upon you in that magnification and and i believe you will not have a problem speaking in tongues amen thank you older friend anybody else okay so um that's a good point that you brought out about we may have some new believers um in the house. And so I'm going to dial it back to a little bit because this was one of the things that I was going to talk about. I have some questions I want to ask you. And so everyone on here, I believe we are all believers and we believe in Jesus Christ. We have given our lives to Jesus and we want to live um, as Christ would have us to live um, to, you know, to make other disciples, to introduce people to Christ and his power and to know him personally. He's a God that loves beyond any other love that we could ever imagine. And so as I talked about on um, last Friday night, you know, God's love is just like that crazy kind of love where you have somebody, we, we all may have had somebody who like loved us beyond like, you know, we're just like, huh? the stalker kind of love. And you're just like, what is happening here, right? But God loves us in a way that it's just, you know, no matter what or what, what you've done or, you know, what, what you're even thinking about your deep, dark, dark thoughts, he's there and he still loves you like no one else loves you. And so that deepness and that, that deep love of God for, we, for us as believers is, is so keen to who we are and whose we are and understanding our identity. And so um, as we do that, we begin to journey in life with trying to figure out how do we, you know, we know our, our enemy, we know that, the, that Satan is our enemy and he's going to try to come at us and he's going to try to make us not uh, be able to live this life so easily or, you know, um, just have challenges after challenges. And what do we do as believers? Like how much of the word of God do we know and do we understand? And this is where this, the gifts of the spirit intersect with our everyday journey on where we're ultimately going. And why is that? Because the Bible talks, the enemy knows how important fellowship is. The enemy knows how important communication is. The enemy knows how important it is for somebody to know their history, somebody to know the power that they have when they're sick, when they need something. The enemy knows, you know, he is our foe. He is not trying to be our friend, right? He is our foe. He hated Jesus Christ and he hates Jesus Christ and he hates us. And we are going to tear his kingdom down in, not because of us, in spite of us. And so I wanted to ask you some questions tonight. Brother Prince, do I have the, let's see if I'm able to share screen. Yeah, good. Okay. So there's some questions I wanna ask you as a believer. I think there's nine, two, four, six, eight. And this is spiritual gifts cannot be earned. So when you see somebody that you think is a spiritual giant and they're doing this and doing that, it's, it's not because they earned it. It's because of what we said, that first scripture we read about God's grace to every believer. And so the questions I want to ask you, if you have a sheet of paper or um, if you can mentally uh, keep track of this and tell me how many, what you answered, um, or you can use your phone, I want you to answer these questions. It says, spiritual gifts cannot be earned. Do a checkup to see if you are spiritual enough to have a spiritual gift. The first one says, do you faithfully attend church? Do you check that, yes or no? So this says, do you do, do a checkup to see if you have spiritual enough, uh, uh, you are spiritual enough to have a spiritual gift? Do you always tithe? And you don't, I don't need anybody to yell out the answers. Do you consistently read the Bible and pray? Have you been a Christian for at least a year? Are your parents Christians? Were you baptized? Are you an all around nice person? 
And are you a true believer in Jesus Christ? Okay, now this is the part I want to, I do want to see from people. How many people have at least four check marks? How many people have at least eight? Sister Helen, you have four. Is there eight? How many people have two? Deacon Lee, how many people have one? How many people have zero? <laughs> Elder friend. How many people believe we should check all eight? Brother Andy's saying, oh, whoa. <laughs> what am I trying to get at here? Does anybody know? I can't, um, Sister Sarita, so if somebody raises the hand, what am I trying to get on, get at here? Okay, so I'll just read you what it says. It says- I see that um, Elder Margie Diane raised her hand. Okay, Sister Diane, what am I trying to get at? We, we hear you now, Diane. Thank you, thank you. I had one no anyway, and that was about your parents being Christians, but um, but I know that God loved them anyway. That's they right. Tried. They tried. But what I think you're trying to get at here is that we have a desire. Yeah. We have a desire yeah. to all these things. Yep. Yeah. We really do desire these so things. Yeah. We talked about coveting the gifts, right? Yes. That is true. Yes, Sister Diane. So here's what the writer of this, I took this from a book that I um, have been reading about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It says, how do you do? To qualify for a spiritual gift, the only statement you needed to check was the last one, that you are a true believer in Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean that you got it wrong if you checked off more than that, because I didn't tell you where I was going with this. If you are a Christian, you have at least one spiritual gift, regardless of how seemingly spiritual you are or you are not. How did you become a Christian? And this go to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. And I'll read it from here. For it is by grace. Here's that word again. So when people think, oh, this person's a big wig or has this big old title or whatever, who they are, a mega church pastor or, you know, somebody really famous. No, the gifts come for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourself. It is the gift of God which is the Holy Spirit, not by works so that no one can boast. So the gifts are put in you, not by your works, but through the through, through grace, through, through grace that you've been saved and through faith. You became a Christian because of God's grace, not because of anything you did to deserve it. So the gifts aren't earned. You don't earn the gifts. What we read in the beginning in Ephesians um, 7, was it, 7 or 4, we read about coveting the gifts, coveting the gifts earnestly. I want us to go to 1 Corinthians. Actually, I'm going to ask Sister Camille to find 1 Corinthians 12, 31 in the New Living Testament version. And Sister Sarita to find 1 Corinthians 12, 31 in the King James Version. And let's see, Deacon Lee, to find 1 Corinthians 12, 31 in the message version. And let's see, who else can we? Kyrisa, to find 1 Corinthians 12, 31 in the amplified version. I would like you to read each of those versions. And I'll start first, 1 Corinthians 12, 31. Um, Sister Camille has NLT. Um, Sister Sarita has King James. Um, who did I give message? I gave message to Deacon Lee. And um, Sister Kyrisa has the Amplified. 
Sister Camille, when you're ready. Yes. So 1 Corinthians 12, 31 says, so you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. Yes. Now this is when he was speaking again, a way of life that was best of all. Now we're reading a little out of context because we didn't read what came before it. The apostle Paul is talking about love people. L-O-V-E. Read that one more time, Sister Camille, from that version. You should earnestly. Earnestly means with a passion, like going in. Go ahead, Sister Camille. So you should so you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. Now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. So you come into the church. You know, sometimes there's jealousy because people see people going forth and whatever they do. And we know, like I've been in the church long enough and we know that's life, right? That's, that's, we clearly, that's the enemy. He will bring that because he knows that brings division, right? He knows that. So you're some beautiful singer, some beautiful dancer, you know, somebody who can preach or teach and you can just, and you, you know, rock the house and whatever you do for God, right? But the enemy knows you got somebody sitting there like, mm, I'm bored or, right? Because we know that is that spirit. That is that spirit of jealousy. That is that spirit of division. That is that spirit of not love, right? The enemy will do that. So somebody has that kind of something. And when babes come into the church, we have to teach that because some babes and some Christians, they bring that. That's, that's their life experience, right? They have issues. There's, there's this whole self-worth thing. They don't understand who they are. And when we operate in the gifts, they are supernatural. And every single one of us can have it. That is the joy in this thing, in, in serving Christ. That's why I have a passion for what I do. I love God because when your heart is right, when you desire to do something right, when you go to him and just say, God, I'm yours, I'm available, he can use you. That's when you see people stepping out. I get excited when I see the little kids saying, those three little Lee boys, every time we do something, can you pick me? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm like, yes, any service we're having kids, I'm picking you because they desire. I want to develop that. They earnestly desire the gift to come forth, right? That's under the gifts of motivation, Holy Spirit man manifestation, motivational gifts. The gifts that come forth and serve the church, to be of service, to encourage. When that little boy did his testimony, which took less than 30 seconds, I think he brought the house down and we didn't stop shouting until like 11 o'clock. We probably, we started somewhere around like, you know, 1045, right? There's a point in that. The power of God is there, earnestly desiring the gifts. Sister Sarita, read it, read it in the King James Version. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Oh, man. And I love the way, right? King James, this is the one that's the closest, right? Covet, to covet, to desire, that strong desire. Cover earnestly the best gifts. The best, right? What, and, and again, God knows how we each see it. I might not be excited about cleaning the church, but boy, do I get excited about writing a paper or doing something administrative, making another grid, um, you know, making a checklist. You know, I get thrilled when we have to do something like that. I'll do it, <laughs> right? I know the things that I have passion about. And if I can make time, I dream about those things in my sleep. When you are dreaming about stuff, when you are constantly thinking about a new way to do, like Brother Prince technology, that is a gift that has God has given you. That's the natural. And when you combine that with the supernatural, man, you are the bomb. Jesus can use you in any way. Because he, he knows he can take your gifts and expand them in any way to reach the church, to serve the church. Your gifts 
Your supernatural gifts are for the church. Um, who did I, uh, Deacon Lee, I gave you message, right? You're on 10, 1031? Uh, 1231, 1 Corinthians 1231, message version. I think that one's a little long, but let's hear it. Okay. It says, oh, it don't give me okay. But well, it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and not a gigantic unidimensional part. It's not all apostle, not all prophet, not all miracle worker, not all healer, not all prayer in tongues, not all interpreter of tongues. And yet some of you keep competing for so-called important parts, but now I want to lay out a far better way for you. Thank you, Deacon Lee. I love that. It's Christ is dimensional. He's not just one thing. It's not all pastor. It's not all, you know, uh, apostle. It's not all praying. It's he's dimensional. Every single one of us on here have, we may have some of the same gifts, but we have different gifts. I can't riff like Sister Sherry can riff and go into a psalmist. That's not how Christ has made me. If I desire that, maybe, but I know I know how to worship and praise, but I can't be a psalmist in the way that she is. And like Pastor Pelham was saying, um, that for me was just another confirmation. You know, when we talk about what we see in people and their gifts coming forward, we have to encourage people to continue to do what they do. And I heard Pastor Pelham say, Sister Sherry began a little song in the church and then it got louder and louder because that is how God has gifted her. Her gift is for the church. Her gift is to encourage the church. It's to inspire the church. Yes, it's, you know, it's coming forth from her, but it's the whole, it's holy, it's Holy Ghost inspired. You know, some people don't like the word Holy Ghost, but it's Holy Ghost inspired, you know, Holy Spirit inspired, right? It's inspired by the spirit, a supernatural gift, a gift that you can only tap into if you're a believer. Now, there are people that are out there that sing gospel music and they can sing but they cannot sing with an anointing. They don't have it. Some of them, you know, they can't bring a house down with the anointing because they are not, they're not believers. They just sing gospel music because it feels good. It's inspirational. They grew up in the church. They like it. They can make money with it. They have a good voice, but they are not anointed in the same way that somebody is who is flowing, who has coveted the gifts because the gifts are for the body of Christ and to uplift the body of Christ. Um, okay, who had the last one? The Amplified, Kyrisa. Are you here, Kai? All right, I'm gonna ask somebody to read that last one. 1 Corinthians 12, 31. Andy, are you here? You have your Bible out there? If not, I do have yep. the Amplified open. Okay. okay. Andy okay. has it. Okay. Oh, but I don't know if he has the Amplified. Do you have the amp You have your phone? No. Your Blackberry? Yeah, I have my phone. <laughs> Can you pull up the Amplified? <laughs> oh, it's like that, huh? No, I could give it to Sarita. Can, no, I'm serious. All right, hold on. So, so let's go back to some scriptures. You became a Christian because of God's grace, not because of anything you did, you said, how you look, how much money you have. You became a Christian because of his grace. He loved you. You're special so much he desires that you live an abundant life on this earth and eternally right pa i heard pastors tell him saying the other day and we know that scripture right that he desires that we be in good health 
right? Even as our soul prospers, right? So it's, he wants us to be well. Mind, body, and soul, because that is what we are made of. And yes, we struggle. I, I know I've had health issues in the past. Um, and you know, the enemy, as we get older, that's part of aging. I'm not gonna claim that, but it is part of it, right? But he wants us to, he wants us to flourish mind, body, and soul. You ready to read, Minister Andy? I'm downloading the app. Oh, okay, Sarita. It's okay, honey. Oh. I'll let Sister Sarita okay. go. You can do it next week. Yes, <laughs> <Sister Ma 'am>. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be ready next week. <laughs> Sister Sarita, go ahead, honey. Sure. But earnestly desire and strive for the greater gifts if acquiring them is going to be your goal. And yet I will show you a still more excellent way one of the choicest graces and highest and the highest of them all unselfish love oh oh my gosh sis you got to read that again like yes mm. say that one more time you got to read that one more time sure but earnestly desire and strive for the greater gifts if acquiring them is going to be your goal and yet i will show you a still more excellent way one of the choicest graces and the highest of them all unselfish love Ah, man, earnestly desire and strive. People, the gift is given to you. But in, in this case, you got to do something for the gift. Just like we talked about speaking in tongues. You got to open your mouth. So earnestly desire the gifts and strive. But the highest of these, I'm bringing you back to that chapter. First Corinthians 13. We're going to read it. Right? It says, so I speak with the tongues of men and angels. Right? So, whew, this is good. Now, I didn't write this in my notes, but I'm thinking of something here. When I was talking to you about spiritual tongues, right? There's a tongue of man and there's tongue of angels. And as he, this is when he's saying, though I speak with the tongue of men and angels. Right, but have not love, I have become sound and brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift, I could have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith, so I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So we desire the gifts, we yearn the gifts, but if we don't have love, we don't have anything because love is the core. Do you hear me, church? Love is the core. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. So you are not going to profit. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked does not think, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. So that means when somebody is doing something wrong or they get caught in doing something wrong, we should not be rejoicing and not feel happy about that, right? Although we may feel a kind of thing about somebody, love doesn't do that. That's the kind of love. Our love is different from the world's love. Our love is the love of God that the love that God gives us, we're to give to men, it's different. Love bears, um, wait, let's do, okay, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You hear me? Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But what that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, 
now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abides faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. And then in that next verse was the scripture I read you earlier when he was talking about tongues, gifts, pursue love and desire, spiritual gifts, pursue it and desire it, especially, and then he goes on to speak. So we have to pursue it. And so when I ask you those questions, um, do, a, uh, do a checkup to see if you are spiritual enough for a spiritual gift, the only thing you need to have to have a spiritual gift is to be a believer. Now God chooses how many gifts he gives to whomever, but I have seen it come forth. I have seen our people in our church even now as we're learning about the gifts, I see people desiring it. I see people, God taking people to a deeper level. I even see it in myself because I'm beginning to understand it in a way that I don't know. I, I think I understood maybe five years ago, 10 years ago, or maybe I didn't want to. There, I think, I know for me, it's the, it's receiving the gift. It's the receptiveness to the gift. It's saying, okay. And I know that like along the way I have been, people have prophesied over me from a child about my ability to preach and teach. And I just, I'm like, I don't like to talk publicly. I still don't like doing it. I will tell you that is the real truth. But I know it is, it's not a gift it's not my gift, it belongs to God. And yes, I know how to open my mouth. Yes, Sarita, open the gift, openness to the gift, right? And then open the gift. Um, I, I joke about it even as I lead people in work and even in you know all these years, I'm like, when people ask me, you know, they'll ask you to describe yourself when you're doing those icebreaker games and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I think I'm a really quiet person. I don't really talk that much. And then once they get to know me, they're like, uh-uh, that is not true. <laughs> and I'm like, but it is. Like, I don't think I talk. <laughs> they're like, nope, you, you misrepresented who you were, right? Maybe that could be, I like what Sarita wrote, openness to the gift, right? Because I'm like, no, I don't really talk. Sister Rochelle, you have your hand up. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. You, Sister Rochelle, you have a question? Yeah, sorry. I forgot I had to lift my laptop to talk. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate what Elder Fran said um, because I have a desire to speak in tongue. I took a class Reverend Mary taught um, and everybody in the class is speaking in tongue, but I'm not. <laughs> where, where is it? I don't know where it is. Um, but I, I remember before um, Sister Ruby moved, she and I um, were out to lunch and I was telling her an experience, a couple of experiences I had while sleeping. And, you know, I, I told her about these words that were I was speaking and I didn't know what they were. I didn't know what they meant. I said, I kept doing them over and over. And I, you know, my mind is saying, what are you talking about? And she said I was speaking in tongue, but I never, while awake, have been able to do that. So I appreciate Elder Fran saying that you just need to um, be quiet and praise God, and maybe it will happen. Well, so yes, I totally agree with that. Um, but I, so here's the piece that I'm going to bring you back to the scriptures that the scripture that we read earlier, if that is your desire and the word of God says that the gift, uh, the gifts of tongues, certainly tongues is for the edification, right? If we do it publicly, it is for the edification of the church. But when we speak a heavenly tongue, that is a tongue to God between you and God, as Elder Fran um, mentioned about worship, right? So worshiping Christ, when I actually um, came forth and began speaking in tongues, it wasn't in front of anybody. 
It was in my bedroom. Um, I was alone praying by myself in my worship time, praying to God. And I just kept at that time, the church, the, the women who were mentoring me, encouraging me, it was Pastor Shirley Robinson. She was like, just desire it and tell the Lord that and open your mouth. So I'm going to say the same thing to you where you said, but it didn't come again. Um, yes, it can come in a dream, but like we talked about earlier, Sister Rochelle, I do, and I'm gonna pull Pastor in on this one because I want him to speak from, he you know, probably most likely has more knowledge than me on this. Um, but, um, you know, in, in receiving the gift, and again, um, I'm gonna pull out some scriptures while Pastor talks about um, the gifts of the tongue. You, you, have to, you have to open your mouth first and you let the Holy Spirit do the rest. And you have to stop thinking about the people around you. I think that was one reason because of, especially back then, my personality and my makeup, I was so, again, I thought I, you know, I was very quiet and very introvert at that stage in my life. I know that. And publicly, I don't even think I lifted my hands um, uh, at that point in my Christianity. I was 16, 17, um, but there were other young people that did. And I desired, I heard Sister Sherry say when she came to the church, right? She knew that God put the singing in her and she would look over at the praise team and desire that. I desired that. I said, God, I desire that. I want to do that. That gift is for me too. You are no respect of persons. Holy Spirit, teach me how to speak to you because it is a heavenly tongue. Pastor, I'm gonna pull you into this and to uh, give the commentary. All right, uh, praise the Lord, can you hear me? Praise the Lord. We can hear you. We're so happy to see you tonight. <laughs> Praise God. It's good to be here. It seems like forever. <laughs> you know, I, I really like the answer to uh, Rochelle, to her, her comment. And, and I wanted to say something uh, before she even made her comment. But when she made her comment, uh, it, it just let me know. It was like confirmation to share what I wanted to share. And... Um, you know, I'm going to stop by where you were in um, 1 Corinthians, and uh, it was 12 and 31. It says, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. All right, so we know that that way that Paul was talking about showing us, which was a more excellent way, was love. All right, but it says covet. God says, covet, because he wants the best for you. He wants you to want the best. He wants to give you the best. And when I thought about that, it bring me to a scripture. And I want to share this here with you because this is a true testimony. All right? Go to um, Luke 11. Beginning at it. Let me see. Luke 11, beginning at 11. Actually, I'm going to add 10 in there. All right. So it says, for everyone that asketh, receive it, and he that seeketh, find it, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And then it says, if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he shall ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Margie, you mentioned something and you said, open your mouth. <laughs> and I was in New Bedford 
one night at a revival service. And for a while before that, I, I've seen people speaking in tongues and fired up church services. I mean, you could feel the spirit of God and I so much desired to speak in tongues myself. I, I've been taught through the preaching and the teaching about tongues and, and the necessity of it and, and things. And never once did I get to a place where I was actually speaking in tongues myself, but I so much desired it. And um, every night, this was daily, when I would get home, I would kneel down at the end of my bed and I would open my Bible to this here scripture. If you then being evil, give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? And I would pray to God and just wait on him to give me the gift of speaking in tongues. And one day we went to a service again. We went to New Bethan and it was a revival service. And the minister at the end of the service, he asked if anybody wanted prayer and he, wanted, he said, uh, I want you to come up and, um, and I wanna lay hands on you. And um, so I went up and um, he asked me, he leaned over and he said, what do you want? What do you want from God? And I said, I want the Holy Ghost and I wanna speak in tongues. And he said, thank him for it. He said, just, just begin to thank him for it. And I began to thank him for it at that altar. Do you know before I left that altar, I was speaking in tongues? Praise God. I spoke in tongues all the way from New Bedford back to Woonsocket. I could not stop, Thanks. okay? And all it was, was that out of all that I was doing as far as asking God for, I never once thanked him for it. In other words, that was just putting the icing on my believing, yeah. okay? And when you go to God and you ask God for something, you have to believe not that you're going to get it, but that you already have it. Yes. You see, the devil will come in and tell you and stuff like, you know, that's not speaking in tongues. No, you have to start where you have to start and yeah. you have to cultivate the gift. Come on. Okay. Please. So uh, I want to encourage everyone to desire, all right, that gift, all right, to begin what's laid upon your heart to utter it. And once you utter it, don't take it lightly like it's really nothing. No, it's the gift and begin to cultivate it. Yes. You know, it happened to me. And what I really, what really touched me is when Maji said, open your mouth. Okay. And that's what we have to do. We're, we're, we're sitting there, we're waiting on the Holy Ghost and we're just waiting for it just to jump in us one day while we're sitting in the chair and all of a sudden, yeah, my bullshit that is. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Begin to cultivate the gift. It's already in you. All right. Ask God. All right. Thank him for it and begin to cultivate the gift that is already okay. in you. Yes. All right. Amen. Thank you. That's good, Pastor. Amen. So Ephesians 4, 7, it talks about his grace at work in our lives. Right. That's the faith part that Pastor was talking about. Everything we do as we wrap this piece up, I'm coming in last three minutes, everything we do is based on our faith. Pastor just said it, whatever gift it is. And then once we get that gift or when whatever gift you're walking in, if it's prophecy, he, Pastor, you hit it. You got to cultivate it. So what does that mean? It means you got to step out in it. You can't, yeah, you're going to be afraid. I can't say you can't be afraid. Like I tell you, when I go up to speak, most of the times I have a little something in my stomach, but I know I love that. I, I really do. Cause I'm like, Ooh, that means Holy spirit. You are going to move. Cause this is not the Margie that I know. The Margie I know is like, nah, I don't want to do this. I'm not speaking it. The Margie I know doesn't get in my normal self. I don't get that little feeling in my stomach. Like, Oh my God, am I going to get everything? Dot the I's cross the T's. But when I get that feeling, I know it's the Holy spirit. I'm like, yeah, come on. Holy spirit. I love it, even though I'm feeling like, oh, I'm feeling some kind of way, God. But that's when I know he's taken over. It's no longer me. He's used, I'm the, I'm the body, I'm the mouthpiece. And he's given me the knowledge and he's using that, that person, that vessel to bring that out. And so, again, I can tell you from my own experience as a shy person that that is really how it worked for me. 
I never wanted to be up front. I didn't want to lead from the front. I always wanted to lead from the back. I didn't want anybody to acknowledge me. I didn't want to sing. I didn't want to dance, all those things. But I love what I know, the things that I loved and I love doing. I'm like, yeah, I can do it from some back end room or whatever, because nobody needs to see me to do that kind of work. But then when God started putting me in public platforms, I'm like, I get it, God. It's no longer us. Our gifts are for the church. And when we speak in tongues, there's that edification, that heavenly tongue that we speak to our father, just like pastor just did now, right? Speaking in the spirit, you've got to, like, even when we're like right now, he just blurted it out, right? That's, that's a tongue. I don't know what he said, but God knows what he said, right? And as we worship God and as we do things in God and as we go to him, that's our talk to him, our language to him. He knows what you're saying. Those are the heavenly groanings. The angels worship him in that way. And so church, as I wrap this piece up, I encourage you, I admonish you to take the scriptures that we're learning. And next week we will break it down. We will go to, um, tonight we talked a little bit about prophecy, more, more about the, um, the gifts of tongues, but we'll spend a little more time on that. Um, the power to say something. We'll talk about the other three, um, the other two sections. Um, hopefully next week we'll give each section like 15 minutes. It's a lot to get in, but if we don't finish it up, then we'll do it the following week when we do our recap of um, what we're trying to learn. Any quick questions before, I say quick questions, any questions <laughs> before we, I hand it over to Elder Fran. Comments. All right, Elder Fran, it's all you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God for Elder Maji and bringing forth the lesson on today. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. And what are we going to do? We're going to start thanking God, hallelujah, for the spirit of God to be within us and to magnify itself within us because we already know the spirit of God is already within us to magnify itself. And those that desire to speak in tongues, we're going to start thanking God, hallelujah, glory be to God. Thank you. Thank you. We have so much to be thankful for. Glory be to God. Spend time with God, that relationship you have with him. He will give you